Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video, we'll solve two great problems from Newton's Laws of Motion from the book SBT. So this is the first problem and we have a car that is being driven on a tilted ground. The ground makes an angle of theta with the horizontal. So the driver drives on a circle of radius r. The coefficient of friction between the tires and the ground is mu. So we have to determine the largest speed for which the car will not slip at point A. Assume that the rate of change of speed is zero, which means the tan there is no tangential acceleration in this case. So let's say this is the center of the circle and let's say this is the point A that we're talking about. So if we consider a frame of reference that is rotating with the same angular velocity as this car is rotating about the point O, then with respect to that frame of reference, we have to apply a centrifugal force and whose magnitude would be m v square by r in the direction of this r vector. And there will be one more force in the along the tangent to the plane and that is mg sin theta. And now in that frame of reference that we just talked about, this car is at rest. Friction will act in some direction like this and the resultant due to all these three forces must be zero. Now let's say this angle is some alpha. As this car is now at rest, we can say f cos alpha equals mg sin theta and f sin alpha would be mv square by r. Now if we square and add both these equations and that is to eliminate this alpha. So on the left hand side, we'll get f squared and on the right hand side, we'll get this term. Now observing this function, we can clearly say as we try to increase the speed, clearly this friction force will also start increasing. So, and at some point when this friction force reaches its limiting value, in that particular situation, the speed would be maximum. And at that particular instant, uh, friction force would be mu times the normal and the normal reaction is mg cos theta. So after solving this, we'll get the maximum value of the speed at point A as this particular value. So now let's talk about the second option. So in this, they're asking what is the largest constant speed with which the car can be driven on the circle without slipping. So, so we have to move along the circle with the same speed and we have to ensure that the car does not slip. So then we have to talk about the point at which the tendency to slip will be the maximum. So if we take any general point like this, the centrifugal will be in the outward direction, which will be m omega square r and the mg sine theta will be, will be in this direction and the friction will be in some direction like this. Okay, now what we have to do is look at all these points over here and think about at which point is the tendency to slip maximum. Well, that will be at the point at which the friction force would be maximum. That would be at the bottommost point. And the reason for that is at the bottommost point, uh, the centrifugal will be in this direction, m omega square by r. And the mg sine theta will also be in this direction. The friction will be maximum at this bottommost point. So if the car will not slip at this particular point, then we can ensure that the car will not slip at any other point. At the maximum speed at this bottom point, the friction here will attain limiting value. So let's solve that. Then v max, v max square by r would be equal to the limiting value of friction, which is mu mg cos theta minus g sine theta. So the maximum constant speed at which we can travel around the circle would be this particular value. So that was the solution for this problem. Now let's move on to the next problem. So this is the next problem. And in this question, we have been given a particle that is attached to two fixed points O1 and O2 on a horizontal line by means of two inextensible strings of equal length L. It is projected with a velocity just sufficient to make it describe a circle in the vertical plane. So they're talking about this circle, okay? Without the strings getting slack and, okay, so these two angles are given to be theta. When the particle is at the lowest point, the string O2P breaks, okay? And the subsequent path of the particle was found to be in a circle of radius l cos theta, fine theta. So let's try to first determine the minimum velocity at point P for which this particle can complete this vertical circle. Now in order to find the minimum velocity with which we have to project the particle, all we have to do is make sure that the strings do not slack at the topmost point. So at the topmost point, let's say the tensions in the strings are T. It was given that this angle is theta. So the component of tension in the radial direction over here would be t sine theta. So we can say 2t sine theta and the there will be weight of the particle which would be mg. So this would be equal to the required centripetal acceleration at the topmost point which would be mv dash square. So let's say the particle is coming out of the plane with a velocity of v dash. This divided by the radius of the circular path. The length of the string was given to be L, which means the radius of the circular path will be L sine theta. So this would be L sine theta. Now, all we have to ensure is that the tension is slightly greater than zero. V dash must be greater than or equal to this particular value. 
So at the topmost point, the velocity has to be greater than or equal to root gl sin theta for this particle to be able to complete this vertical circle. So by using energy conservation, now we can find the velocity at the bottommost point. So let's say the velocity is into the plane. Its magnitude is, let's say, some v. v square would be simply equal to v dash square. That would be gl sin theta plus 2g times the distance between them and that would be 2L sine theta, right? So this would be 2L sine theta. And now if you solve it, you'll get the answer is 5GL sine theta. Okay, so now we determine the velocity at this particular point. Okay, so now what has happened is that when the particle was at the bottommost point, so it has the velocity of V into the plane now in this current situation, the string on the right was, you know, cut. So in the question, they said, and the subsequent path of the particle was found to be a circle of radius L cos theta. So which means it would have traveled in this circle because this is L cos theta, right? Because if you observe the distances, this would be L cos theta. So which means uh, the circle that the particle was traveling would be this particular one. So now all we have to do is, we know, let's assume this tension to be some T and we know this angle is theta. So we can say T cos theta would provide the required centripetal acceleration which would be mv squared divided by the radius of curvature of the path, which is L cos theta. And T sine theta would have to balance the mg. And from here, we'll get tan theta equals 5 divided by tan theta. And from here, we'll get the value of theta as tan inverse of 1 by root 5, which is what we had to determine. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, guys. And if you have any doubts, you can comment down below. And thanks for watching.